Our first guests are Carla Boos and Andres Cladera, who will be collaborating on Quantum Theater's Maria de Buenos Aires. Carla founded the company in 1990 and has served as artistic director since its inception. Andres is the artistic director of the Renaissance City Choirs and the co-founder and artistic director of the Microscopic Opera Company. Carla and Andres previously collaborated on Quantum's Candide, which the Tribune Review called clever and dynamic. Carla and Andres, thank you for joining me. I didn't know we were clever and dynamic. Oh, we are. We are. <laughs> uh, Carla, how did you select this play? Oh, I wouldn't even really say I, I selected it. Um, Andres turned me on to this wonderful, iconic work from his homeland or near his homeland. He's mm. from Montevideo, Uruguay. And I guess this is a very classic piece of work by Astor Piazzolla. It's a traditional sort of standard, well, I would say it's a standard piece because it's tango, but it's not a traditional piece because it merges the opera world, the operatic world, and the tango world, mm -hmm. presenting a, uh, a theatrical piece uh, with tango uh, orchestration, per se. So it was quite groundbreaking in its day, yeah, and I absolutely. think that made it um, appropriate for quantum theater, which, as you know, experiments. Yeah. But really, just he, when he let me see it and hear it, I was gripped by it immediately. Yes, the music's beautiful. Absolutely. How are the two of you working together to bring Maria de Buenos Aires to life? Hmm. We don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know you just had one rehearsal. Yeah. Uh, Can you tell me what kind of prep work you did? Um, how do you rehearse something like this? How do you plan the rehearsal structure? Do you rehearse the music and the staging separately, or do you work them simultaneously? You go first. Well, um, I, we will have uh, some separate rehearsals for, for, the, for the musicians who are going to be in the orchestra, but the reason why we work so well together, I think one of the reasons is that we believe in, in merging the two, that the music and um, the acting, uh, the stage, and everything goes together. Uh, and you know, we blur the lines a little bit between sort of the orchestra setup and the, mm -hmm. the the theatrical element. And you know, the instrumentalist might be part of uh, the theatrics as well. Mm. Um, but it, it all goes together. You know, the the music infuses the acting, and the acting infuses the the, the music. We're constantly going back and forth. So I wouldn't say that it's definitely one that we separate the, mm -hmm. the two. That's that's unusual, I would say, mm -hmm. in yes. the opera world that there. There's usually quite a division between the, the stage director and the, the theatrical things that he or she brings to it and the music. And so mm -hmm. it has been a great um, boon in my career at this point to, to meet somebody who doesn't want to work that way. I, I have wanted to break those traditions of opera to see what um, more intimate and experimental and theatrical things might be possible. So we continue, and this is an especially appropriate piece, I think, to mm -hmm. continue that exploration. But I also wanted to say that part of our um, work going into it, it's, and it goes on, is that it's very important for Andres to explain some things that would be completely uh, unavailable to us about this piece that have to do with the history of the tango. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit? Well, about this, this piece uh, set uh, was created in 1968, but it really um, is a departure from a traditional um, classical orchestra in tango, hmm. um, and uh, a traditional structure where you would have the bandoneon player, which mm -hmm. is a, a kind of an accordion, um, you know, a violin, a bass, a piano, which is the orchestration basically that we have now. But the writing of, of Piazzolla departs from traditional tango and it goes into a little bit of contemporary, contemporary music, even you know, Stravinsky, and a little bit of jazz mixed in. So this piece sort of starts with uh, the milonga, which is a, a style of tango. It's the, the origin of tango, actually. And it goes all the way through this sort of contemporary edgy um, uh, tango mixture with contemporary music and blues. So through the piece, you will see different settings of tango um, that are, I think, I think are essential to the, to the piece. Um, and also, in, in a political uh, perspective, this piece is in the, the end of the 60s into the 70s, where 
both in Uruguay and Argentina, most in South America, went into military governments. So there's a lot of social and political pressure building. So the piece, I think, represents that as well. And Piazzolla's feelings about what had happened to the tango and where it was going and um, how it had become kind of calcified and he broke through things and gave it a sort of a rebirth. And the character of Maria herself is sort of like the personification of the tango, and Piazzolla's opinions are expressed through her journey. It's so in, very in cool. a way, the, the work that I think Carla does with experimentation is what Piazzolla was trying to do with oh. tango, with the form, an experiment, <laughs> and pull it in different directions and see what reactions could happen, what, what could happen um, to the form. So. Andres, I'm interested to know how it's different um, directing a narrative piece like an operetta compared to directing a standalone piece like a choir or a symphony, yeah. especially in this context where you're merging this yeah. stage version with the music? Well, I think um, it, there's a stronger collaboration mm -hmm. with the action that is happening. Um, I mean, it's not, there's not such a, a wall that is built between you know the the theatrics and and the music. So uh, it's that collaboration. I think is what's the difference between mm -hmm. the two. You know, when you conduct a, a choir or an orchestra, it's just to focus on the music. But the music is a service for the telling of the story. It's not a standalone element. Um, it's all all of these elements work together to be able to tell the story that is Maria de Buenos Aires. I mean, that's I think the main difference between the two. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the staging and where it will be located? Sure. Um, in East Liberty, there is the old Y building. It's right next to the library, quite close to East Liberty Presbyterian Church. It was built by Andrew Carnegie at the turn of the last century, and it was a glamorous, gorgeous building with terrazzo floors, mm. and it has a ballroom on the second floor that is oh, has beautiful proportions and moldings and doorways and things. It's quite in disrepair at this point. It's got a tarnished glory to it that we really like. And Andres really felt that it was the sort of place one could imagine hearing and, and seeing tango. And um, we'll seat the audience in a kind of cabaret style at little tables and have mm -hmm. built a construction that lets the the singers and the dancers and the actors, because the, the thing has all of those, those people, move um, through, through the space, through the audience in a kind of winding way that we hope approximates the streets of Buenos Aires. Mm, that so sounds great. What I really like about that is the uh, real immersion into the world that is tango. You know, that you would experience tango in a setting, in a social club kind of setting mm -hmm. where tango would have happened. Great. Well, good luck with rehearsals. I can't wait to see the production. Quantum Theater presents Maria de Buenos Aires running March 24th through April 17th. For tickets, call 888-71-TICKETS or visit them on the web at quantumtheater.com. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you.